remote desert under the scorching sun, scientists disguised as army officers digging shafts, midnight caravans moving in eerie silence, and a nation holding its breath as the Buddha finally smiled. This is the tale of how India, against all odds, silently stepped into the elite club of nuclear powers, from the secretive 1974 Pokhran 1 test to the explosive triumph of Pokhran 2 in 1998. Stick around because this journey has intrigue, geopolitics and a dash of sheer audacity. In 1945, when the United States dropped two atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the world was forced into a new era, the nuclear age. The scale of devastation was apocalyptic. Imagine a city turned into ashes in under a minute. Hospitals crumbled, shadows burned into walls and survivors, what few there were, suffered for decades. Suddenly, every major power wanted that button. The USSR detonated its first bomb by 1949, Britain followed, then France, and in 1964 China entered the nuclear club, sending shockwaves across Asia, especially in India. Just two years earlier, China had invaded India in the 1962 Sino-Indian War. It wasn't just a border skirmish, it was a humiliation. India was caught unprepared. Soldiers fought at high altitudes with no proper gear. China walked away with territory and left behind a bruised Indian military and morale. Then came 1965. Pakistan launched Operation Gibraltar, sending infiltrators into Kashmir to stoke rebellion. It escalated into full-blown war. India fought back, but the message was clear. It was surrounded by hostile, increasingly aggressive neighbors. In the midst of this chaos, Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri made a bold declaration. India would no longer bow to global pressure. If pushed, it would build the bomb. Not to conquer, but to survive. This was the ignition point. Enter Homi Jahangir Babha, the brilliant nuclear physicist trained at Cambridge, and J.R.D. Tata, India's industrial visionary. Together they laid the foundation for India's atomic energy program. While Baba led scientific innovation, J.R.D. Tata backed the infrastructure, creating the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research and funding critical labs and reactor projects. India's journey toward nuclear self-sufficiency had begun not with aggression but with fear, loss and determination. Fast forward to May 18th, 1974. The setting, a remote army base in the Thar Desert, Pokhran, Rajasthan. What looked like barren land was in reality the stage for India's first nuclear test, Operation Smiling Buddha. The name was ironic. Behind that calm smile was India's answer to decades of provocation. The project was orchestrated under tight secrecy. The components came in piece by piece, disguised in army trucks and cargo containers. Scientists from Bark worked around the clock. Their bomb was a plutonium implosion device with plutonium sourced from the Cyrus reactor, a reactor originally supplied by Canada with heavy water from the US intended for peaceful energy use. That irony wasn't lost on the world. At 8.05 a.m., the button was pushed. A thunderous underground blast shook the desert. The crater was over 10 meters deep. India had successfully conducted a nuclear explosion officially for peaceful purposes. But the strategic message was unmistakable. India had the know-how, and it could weaponize if needed. The global response was swift and severe. Canada and the US accused India of misusing civilian technology. The Nuclear Suppliers Group was formed shortly after to restrict nuclear exports to non-signatories of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, a treaty India had refused to sign, calling it discriminatory. The NPT allowed the five nuclear-armed states to keep their arsenals, while others were expected to disarm or abstain. At home, though, Smiling Buddha was a source of pride. India had declared its arrival on the nuclear stage, despite global sanctions and isolation, but progress soon hit turbulence. Political upheaval struck. The emergency was declared in 1975. Democratic institutions were frozen, and Indira Gandhi's government came under fire. Economic instability and international pressure led to a halt in nuclear testing. India entered a long silence but the ambitions stayed alive. The 1980s and early 90s were a nuclear limbo for India. Technology evolved, but tests were shelved. Then in 1991, the Soviet Union, India's major ally, collapsed. India was on its own in a new unipolar world dominated by the United States. Internally, India was reeling from economic crisis and insurgency. Externally, pressure was building to sign the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, an international agreement aimed at halting all nuclear tests forever. In 1995, Prime Minister P.V. Narasimha Rao decided it was time. 
India began quietly preparing for another test in Pokhran, but it underestimated one key factor, US surveillance. The CIA, through its spy satellites, captured high-resolution images of activity at the test site. Analysts spotted trenches, drill rigs, and containers. The American ambassador confronted India with photographic proof. President Bill Clinton called Rao directly. We know what you're planning. Faced with global exposure and looming sanctions, India backed off again. But this didn't kill the program. It only made Indian planners more careful. They realized that the next time they tested, it would have to be done in total secrecy and with total resolve. In 1998, the wait ended. New Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee came in with a clear mandate. He wasn't just politically astute, he was ideologically committed to a nuclear India. On March 20th, 1998, he gave the go-ahead. This time, India wasn't going to make the same mistake. The tests, called Operation Shakti, were planned with surgical precision and unprecedented secrecy. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, India's missile man, was brought in. He was codenamed Major General Prith Viraj, and every scientist involved used army aliases. They arrived in disguise, moustaches, military uniforms, even fake ID cards. All testing equipment and components were moved at night. Sand and camouflage nets hid drill sites. Trenches were dug at odd angles to avoid detection from satellites. The CIA, which had caught India once, was now completely in the dark. May 11, 1998. Three nuclear devices were detonated underground at Pokhara. Shockwaves were picked up. On May 13, two more devices were tested. In just three days, India went from a latent nuclear power to an openly declared nuclear weapons state. Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee announced it to the world that India had successfully tested its nuclear weapon. The global reaction was swift and angry. Clinton imposed heavy sanctions. Countries like Japan suspended aid. Pakistan, just weeks later, conducted its own tests in response, but India didn't flinch. It had prepared for sanctions, built stockpiles, secured trade alternatives, and relied on its swelling domestic economy. Over time, the sanctions fizzled out. Even the US softened its stance by 2000. India had changed the game forever. May 1998 wasn't just a moment in history, it was a line in the sand. With Pokhran II, India declared more than nuclear capability, it declared intent. Not to dominate, not to threaten, but to defend. India's journey to becoming a nuclear power wasn't born out of ambition, but out of necessity, out of geopolitical survival. Faced with two nuclear neighbours, China and Pakistan, India had no choice but to stand tall. And it did. But it did so with a unique philosophy. India adopted a no-first-use doctrine. That means India will never be the one to launch a nuclear attack. But if attacked, it will respond massively and decisively. This policy sends a powerful message. India's strength lies in restraint. Its weapons are not a threat, they are a deterrent. A silent warning that says, we're not here to start a war, but we will finish one, if forced to. Since then, India has modernized its arsenal advanced delivery systems like Agni and Prithvi missiles, air, land and sea-based capabilities completing the nuclear triad, robust command and control systems under strict civilian oversight. But beyond the hardware, the world has seen a nation that plays the long game. India never signed the Non-Proliferation Treaty, NPT, or Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, CTVT. Not because it rejects peace, but because it rejects unfairness. These treaties froze the global power order, keeping weapons in the hands of a few. India said no and chose to carve its own path. And it worked. Over time, India gained acceptance. It entered global export control regimes like the Missile Technology Control Regime, MTCR, and Wassenaar Arrangement. It signed civil nuclear agreements with the US, France, Russia, and Japan. Even countries that once sanctioned India now seek its partnership. India's nuclear story is one of patience, precision, and principle. So, how did India become a nuclear power? Not overnight, not by accident, but through decades of determination, scientific brilliance, and political will. From the ashes of Hiroshima to the sands of Pokhran, India's journey is proof that great power comes with even greater responsibility. It didn't roar, it smiled, and sometimes that's all it takes. Thank you for watching Tales of History.
We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the past and learned something new about the events that shaped our world. If you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others who love history as much as we do. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our future episodes. Until next time, keep exploring the fascinating stories of history with us. And remember, history isn't just the past, it's the key to understanding our present and shaping our future.